Now we come to another sutta, which is another very interesting sutta. 7.7.62 Once the exalted one was dwelling in Ambapali's grove near Vesali. Stop here for a moment. This Ambapali uh, is mentioned in the, some other sutta and the uh, Vinaya. He was, she was a very beautiful courtesan. Courtesan is a nice sounding word. Uh. It is. It means a high class prostitute. In the days of the Buddha, earning your living as a prostitute uh, was not really considered wrong. And um, she was very beautiful. And um, she uh, gave uh, a piece of land uh, to the Buddha to make into a monastery. And uh, later in life, uh, she renounced and became a nun. And in the Theri Gata verses of the Arahans, uh, uh, she described her life uh, and she described how when she was young she was so beautiful and the hair was jet black uh, and curly and uh, she described uh, her skin was white and soft and, and all that and all the different parts of the body and then when she was old uh, she described uh, how the body has become and uh, <clears throat> and the, the way she described was quite moving and how she became an Arahan and all that. Uh, uh, so that's uh, Ambapali. Then um, then the Sutta continues. Uh, there the Exalted One addressed the monk, saying, Monks, Lord, they replied. And the Exalted One said, Impermanent monks are conditioners, Sankara. Unstable monks are conditioners. Insecure monks are conditioners. So monks, be you dissatisfied with all things of this world. Be you repelled by them. Be you utterly free from them. Let's stop here for a moment. This word Sankara, here we translate as conditioners. Uh, some other books, uh, they translate as conditioned things. But the actual word for conditioned things is Sankata. Uh, so Sankara... Uh, we prefer to translate this as conditioners. Conditioners are those things uh, that condition something else. But anything in the world, uh, <clears throat> everything in the world are conditioners in the sense that they condition other things, but they are also conditioned things because they depend on other conditions. So conditioners are also in a way conditioned things. But the reason the Buddha, we feel, uh, use it in the sense of conditioners is because in some other sutta the Buddha said nah, that all conditioners are impermanent. If everything that conditions, say for example, your body or your mind are impermanent, then if, if those things that condition you are impermanent, then all the more are you impermanent. Just like for example, a shadow of a tree, a shadow of a tree depends on the tree. But the tree is impermanent, therefore the shadow must be even more impermanent. Uh, so, uh, there's a difference. Uh. Now the Buddha continued. Monks, Simaru, king of mountains, is 84,000 leagues in length, 84,000 leagues in breadth, 84,000 leagues immersed in the great ocean. It stands out above the waters of the ocean, 84,000 leagues. Monks, there comes a time when for many years, for many hundreds of years, for many thousands of years, for many hundreds of thousands of years, there is no rain. And when the rains come not, all seed life and vegetation, all trees that yield medicine, palms and giants of the jungle become parched and dried up and are no more. Thus impermanent, thus unstable, thus insecure are all conditioners. Be you dissatisfied with them, be you repelled by them, be you utterly free from them. I'll just stop here for a moment. In some other sutta, the Buddha mentioned uh, that life depends on water. In other words, life depends on rain. All life uh, on our planet uh, is sustained by rain. If there were no rain, uh, 
then uh, life forms uh, slowly uh, will disappear. So here is mentioned uh, when there's no rain uh, for thousands and thousands of years, uh, then all the plants uh, all die up. And when the plants die, uh, other life uh, that depends on the plants also will die. Uh, and uh, this this uh, fact uh, that the Buddha said, uh, life depends on water. Uh, now science uh, uh, begins to realize this. That's why when they send the, uh, these uh, satellites to other planets, uh, they try to find out whether there's any water on the other planets because now scientists, uh, they realize uh, if there's any water at all, uh, in the other planets, huh? that means there must have been life there. Huh? Now the Buddha continues, Monks, there comes a time when in some age, at the end of some vast period, a second sun appears. When the second sun appears, all the streams and the ponds become parched and dried up and are no more. Thus impermanent, thus unstable, thus insecure are all conditioners. Be you utterly free from them. Monks, there comes a time when in some age, at the end of some vast period, a third sun appears. When the third sun appears, all the great rivers become parched and dried and dried up and are no more. That is to say, the Ganges, the Yamuna, the Achiravati, the Sarabhu and the Mahi, thus impermanent, thus unstable, thus insecure, are all conditioners. Be you utterly free from them. Monks, there comes a time when in some age, at the end of some vast period, a fourth sun appears. When the fourth sun appears, all the great lakes from where these great rivers flow become parched and dried up and are no more. That is to say, the Anotata, the Siha Papata, the Ratakara, the Kana Munda, the Kunala, the Chadanta, and the Mandakini. Thus impermanent, thus unstable, thus insecure are all conditioners. Be you utterly free from them. Monks, there comes a time when in some age, at the end of some vast period, a fifth sun appears. When the fifth sun appears, the waters of the mighty ocean recede a hundred leagues. The waters recede two hundred leagues, three, four, five, six, and seven hundred leagues. The waters of the mighty ocean remain at a depth of seven palm trees, of six, five, four, three, two, of merely one palm tree. The waters of the mighty ocean remain at a depth of seven men's stature of height, of six, five, four, three, two, of merely one man's height, of just half a man, of merely up to a man's hip, of, of merely up to his knee, of merely up to his ankle. Monks, just as in the autumn time when the rain deva sheds big drops of rain here and there in the footprints of cows, there are puddles. Even so, monks, as mere puddles in, the, in a cow's footprints are the waters of the mighty ocean here and there. Thus impermanent, thus unstable, thus insecure are all conditioners. Be you utterly free from them. Monks, there comes a time when in some age, at the end of some vast period, a sixth sun appears. When the sixth sun appears, both this earth and Simaru, king of mountains, emit smoke, disgorge smoke, belch forth clouds of smoke. Monks, just as a potter's oven, when first lighted, emits smoke, disgorges smoke, belches forth clouds of smoke. Even so, monks, when the sixth sun appears, both this great earth and Simaru, king of mountains, emit smoke, disgorge smoke, and belch forth clouds of smoke. Thus impermanent, thus unstable, thus insecure are all conditioners. Be you utterly free from them. Monks, there comes a time when in some age, at the end of some vast period, a seventh sun appears. When the seventh sun appears, this great earth and Simaru, king of mountains, bursts into flames, blaze up and become a single sheet of flame. And the fiery beam of the flame of the blaze and the burn of the great earth and of Mount Simeru, thrown up by the winds, reaches even to Brahma's world. The peaks of Mount Simaru, measuring one, two, three, four, and five hundred leagues, 
as it blazes and burns, vanquished and overwhelmed by the vastness of the fiery mass, crumbles away. Out of the blaze and the burn of the great earth and Mount Simaru, there is neither cinder nor ash to be found. Monks, just as out of blazing, burning ghee or oil, no cinder or ash is found. Even so, monks, out of the blaze and burn of the great earth and Mount Simaru, neither cinder nor ash is to be found. Thus impermanent monks are conditioners. Thus unstable monks are conditioners. Thus insecure monks are conditioners. Wherefore, monks, be you dissatisfied with all things of this world. Be you repelled by them. Be you utterly free from them. I'll just stop here for a moment. You see, this sutta is very interesting. It describes very clearly how the world is going to be destroyed in the future. And this is the only sutta in the Nikayas eh, which has this description, you know, of how the world is going to be destroyed by fire. So when people talk about the end of the world, eh, we don't have to worry because the second sun has not appeared. Uh, first, eh, the rains must stop. The rains must stop eh, for thousands and thousands of years. Eh. And then eh, when that happens, eh, then slowly eh, the... Uh, the the trees uh, start to die off and then after a long time uh, a second sun appears and when the second sun appears uh, the streams and the ponds dry up and then after a long time a third sun appears and when the third sun appears uh, the big rivers uh, the Ganges etc all also will dry up and then after a long time uh, a fourth sun appears and when the fourth sun appears uh, the great lakes uh, Behind even those behind the um, Himalayas, eh, they will dry up. Uh, and then after a long time, a fifth sun appears. And when the fifth sun appears, eh, the waters of the ocean eh, begin to dry up, dry up until eh, they become just uh, puddles of water here and there. And then when the sixth sun appears, eh, the earth starts to emit smoke. Uh, a lot of smoke starts to come out. And then when the seventh sun appears, eh, the earth will start to burn and burn up to the heavens, eh, burn up to the Brahma's world. Uh, so this is very interesting eh, because other religions also talk about the fact that the world will be destroyed by fire, but they don't give such a clear description eh, as the Buddha. Now the Buddha continued. Now where is the sage, where is the believer who thinks this great earth and Mount Simaru will be burnt up, will utterly perish and be no more, save or except among those who have seen the goal. In days gone by, monks, there was a teacher named Suneta, a core setter who was free from all lustful passions. Now he had many hundreds of disciples to whom he taught the doctrine of fellowship in Brahma's world. And all they who grasp the word taught by Sunetta in its fullness on the breaking up of the body after death were reborn in the realm of bliss, the Brahma world. But of those who did not grasp the word in full, some after death were reborn into the fellowship of the devas who, had, who have power over others' creations. Some among the devas who delight in creating, some among the Tusita devas, some among the Yama devas, some among the devas of the thirty-three uh, Ottavatimsa heaven, some in the company of the four royal devas, some among wealthy nobles, some among wealthy brahmins, and some among wealthy householders. Now Suneta, the teacher, thought thus, it is not seemly that I should have precisely the same mode of existence as my disciples after death. What if I were to make metta or goodwill eh, become to a perfect degree? And Suneta, the teacher, cultivated the thought of metta for seven years, and then for seven world cycles returned not to this world. He arose in the sphere of radiance, that means in the jhana plains, eh, in Brahma sphere, as Maha Brahma, as Saka Devaraja, as a wheel turning king, endowed with the seven gems. Yet, yet monks, although Suneta lived so long and lasted such a time, he was not freed from birth, from aging, from dying, from sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and despair. He was not freed from dukkha, I say. And what is the reason? 
it was by not being awake to by not penetrating four conditions what four monks it was by not being awake by not being awake to by not penetrating aryan right conduct it was by not being awake to by not penetrating aryan concentration it was by not being awake to by not penetrating aryan wisdom and it was by not being awake to by not penetrating aryan release monks it is just this when aryan right conduct is awakened and penetrated when aryan right con- when aryan concentration is awakened and penetrated when aryan wisdom is awakened and penetrated and when aryan release is awakened and penetrated the craving for life is cut off the cord that binds one to becoming is destroyed and there is no more coming to be as the end of the sutta so in this last part and the buddha is talking about sunetta a course that a course setter means uh, one of those religious leaders uh, who start a new sect uh in chinese i think it's called kai kai tao si uh, one who starts a uh, uh, a new religion and is mentioned here that he was freed from all lustful passions freed from all lustful passions even though this man suneta he had not become an arya yet the sutta says uh, that he was freed uh, from all lustful passions and this shows uh, that this man because he cultivated the jhanas he cultivated the brahma viharas uh, to attain rebirth in the brahma world uh, so he had attained the jhanas so just by attaining jhanas uh, one becomes freed uh, of all lustful passions that means the hindrances are abandoned this is one of the suttas uh, that confirms uh, that when one uh, attains the jhanas uh, the uh, hindrances are abandoned that means cut down although the roots are not pulled up uh, yet uh, it's just like uh, tall grass you cut down the tall grass uh, completely even though the roots are not pulled up uh. now the other thing uh, mentioned here is that uh, and all they who grasp the word taught by suneta in its fullness on the breaking up of the body after death were reborn in the realm of bliss the brahma world but of those who did not grasp the word in full some after death were reborn into the fellowship of the devas who have power over others creation some among the devas who delight in creating some among the tusita devas etc etc the lower devas so here uh it shows uh, that uh, grasping the word of the teacher is very important uh those who grasp the word of the teacher uh, then uh, they get reborn uh, into the higher state uh. so in the same way the word of the buddha is very important to us it is very very important to understand the buddha's words uh, very very well if you understand the suttas uh, 100% uh, then uh, you will get uh, 100% uh, of the result uh, of the buddha's teachings uh, if we don't understand the word of the buddha then uh, uh, we would get uh, nothing out of being a buddhist uh, uh, so it is very important uh, to listen to the discourses of the buddha and understand them uh, so in the last part of the sutta the buddha said uh, it is by cultivating three things uh, are in right conduct are in concentration are in wisdom and are in release uh, that a person uh, um, ends uh, the round of rebirths uh, and uh, destroys uh, dukkha uh, suffering actually the 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 last part are in release is the result of attaining the first three so it is the first three that's important sila samadhi and panya um moral conduct concentration and wisdom and these uh, three things uh, are also the noble eightfold path or the aryan eightfold path taught by the buddha uh, so if we cultivate the um uh, the aryan eightfold path or this sila samadhi and panya uh, fully uh, then we attain full awakening uh, full liberation